you think of one thing you can run with at 4 a.m. in the morning, go to work later at 8. Play tennis in the evening and let us stroll with friends in comfort. The Kumas Velocity Night Road Trace will easily come to mind. Hello runners, welcome back to the Running Dog channel where we dive deep into everything running related. Today we'll be checking out the all new Puma Velocity Nitro Trail running shoe. Let's see if it's all speed and no issues. First impressions matter and the Puma Velocity Nitro 3 makes a bold impression in that regard straight out of the box. The design is sleek, modern and screams ready to perform. But hey, looks are not the most important thing after all. So let's get into the things that really matter. Before 2021, Puma was nowhere near the upper echelon of the running shoe world. However, the introduction of the Nitro Foam in their running shoe line in 2021 changed all that. And with only a few shoe models, Puma became a serious contender in the running shoe market. The Velocity Nitro has been one of their most successful models. They became an instant favorite among runners because of their versatility due to a nice combination of lightweight, good cushion and responsiveness. The flagship model had a 32mm heel stack with an 8mm heel to toe drop. In the second model, they added a firmer full length pro foam beneath the nitro foam for stability. They also added a heel bevel and increased the stack height from 32mm to 33.5mm in the heel and this time with a 10mm heel to toe drop. This was an instant hit among runners and easily became one of the best reviewed shoes of 2022. So what has Puma done with this third version? Have they maintained its versatility? Let's look at these shoes in detail and check out changes to this latest model, the Velocity Nitro 3. Firstly, this looks so much better than the second model. It is more sleek, the color play is lovely and the heel spoiler is a nice touch. A lot of shoes do the job actually, but those that look better are an added advantage, you know? Look better, feel better, work out better. They tweaked the upper material in these shoes to improve structured support and breathability. It feels tougher on hand and less stretchy. It still maintains an inner sock liner that feels very nice around the foot. More heel and ankle padding, redesigned slightly thicker tongue for better ankle support and comfort. It also has a slightly firmer heel counter to improve the heel stability. The laces are slightly elastic this time. To the midsole now, once again, the thickness in the midsole has been increased, this time by 2.5 millimeters. And the midsole drop has reduced from 10 millimeters back to 8 millimeters like in the previous version. So what we have in this now is 36 millimeters in the heel, 28 in the forefoot, what this does is that it strikes a nice balance between heel strikers and forefoot strikers. The dual density midsole is maintained. The firmer pro foam sits beneath the softer and bouncier nitro foam. The insole is removable, thick and soft. So it gives a nice soft plush feel on the feet. Notice the concavity in the heel area that cups the heel also gives very nice secure feeling to the heel. Slight change to the outsole pattern now with slightly more rubber coverage. Same grip, excellent traction, nice durability. It did gain a little weight though, just four grams on the previous version. In my size US 11 or EU 45, the Velocity Nitro 2 weighed 292 grams, while these weigh 296 grams. However, it's still a decently lightweight shoe when you compare it with its competitors. The Pegasus 40 weighs 320 grams in the same size. The Essex Cumulus 25 weighs uh, 297 grams. So let's talk about the feet. Uh -huh. In this version, Puma dialed in with precision, especially for those with regular to narrow feet. The upper wraps snugly around your foot like a second skin, offering a secure yet breathable feel. So this gave a very comfortable but snug fit. As you can see, I have some space at the tip of my toes here, which I like. The shoe length is very good. The width of the shoes is okay for me. You know, it fits very snugly around my feet. Like I said, very slick feel to these shoes. For my size, I love it, you know, but if you have a wider fit, then you might have a problem with this. You, they might, those with wider fit may find the toe box rather constricting. But for those with regular or narrow feet like me, they are going to really love in this. The fit in the toe box and also in the midfoot is just excellent. I love the way the midfoot just grabs nicely. And I can also feel very good arch support here. 
of course as you can see there's no hint of a heel slippage here at all and i also love that this heel tab here kind of leans back a little some of these shoes that are straight or curving inwards they impinge on the back of the ankle but with this heel tab leaning back that gives a very comfortable feel so you see very nice padding nice and thick padding around the ankle very nice tongue nicely alleviating the pressure from the laces so overall this is a very nice fit i really love the way the shoe feels around my feet it's very comfortable it's soft and good on the feet feel so yeah excellent lockdown very good arch support overall i will say very nice fit for this so i suggest you go through the size now let's get to the real test the run itself now one of the things that has kept the velocity popular is its simplicity no long gists just out there to do the job once again the velocity tray has lived up to its name i found them responsive supportive nicely cushioned and lightweight they felt very sleek on feet. The transitions were smooth, they run lively. Heel or forefoot striking, they felt great. Whether you are pounding the pavement or hitting light trails, these shoes deliver a smooth and comfortable ride. The new shoes are also more stable than the previous version. And they also protected the legs nicely. I've done a 10 km and a 12 km run in these and each time they felt very comfortable and post run my feet felt great the shoes look tough so expect serious miles from these one thing i must mention is that these shoes do need some breaking period if you get them out of the box and lace these shoes up and go for a run immediately you might feel disappointed however by the time you got up to 15 to 20 kilometers in these they soften out and that is when you begin to appreciate the comfort and the bounce that you can get out of these shoes if you want to get the best out of them immediately the best thing to do is to wear them casually where you may have to be on your foot you know soften them out before you go on your first run while the velocity 3 excels in several areas there are still a few areas of concern many people may find the toe box a tad too snug especially those with wider feet also many may find a slight increase in weight unappealing you know especially when you compare with some other competitors like the Nova Blast 3 and 4 the price has also been jacked up by $15. In the US, these are selling for $135. US dollars. Here in Saudi Arabia, it's between $580 to $630 Saudi real, although the price is coming down. You know, I snatched this up at a discount at, I think, $307 Saudi real. The price always comes down. So what is my verdict? I feel that the Velocity Trail compares favorably amongst its peers. Whether you are a seasoned runner or just starting out on your fitness journey, these shoes are worth buying. They have maintained their versatility, they have maintained their durability, and they've improved their comfort a little. This is one shoe that you can do anything with. You know, from slow runs to quick short sprints to relatively longer runs up to a half marathon. This shoe is nice for neutral runners. Both heel and four foot strikers are going to feel nice in this. So guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos and see you in the next one. <laughs> Welcome my friend. This is my friend. <laughs> Good. Thank you.